Good morning, I'm out at the Herefordshire and it's um, it's a little chilly today compared to yesterday. So how do you lower your scores the fastest? What is the quickest way of lowering your scores, no matter your handicap? Well, if you go and ask a two handicapper, he will tell you it's the short game. It's pitching closer, it's chipping closer, it's holding those short putts that you need for your par. Yet where do we see the average golfer? Well, he's on the range, hitting driver after driver after driver. Now there's two ways of chipping. Nick Fowler used to pick a spot on the green, just on the green here. And depending where the flag is, he'd then choose his club. So if it was a close flag, he'd quite simply take the sand wedge and make a short stroke. and land it on his spot, and it wouldn't run very far. But if he had a longer one, perhaps he's got the full length of the 11th green at the Masters, then he'd take a six iron, and he'd use exactly the same stroke, exactly the same landing spot, but obviously it'd run out an awful lot more. That's one simple way of doing it is to use different clubs to the same landing spot and it will run out a different amount. I do something slightly different. I just use two clubs. One for coming up and one for running out. And then I will use a different length swing depending on how far I want it to go. So there's the two schools of thought in chipping. So when I want to go up or over something, I just use my sand wedge and I open the face just a small amount just to add a bit of bounce to the bottom of the club. Although I'm adding loft, what I'm really adding is a bit more bounce. And then depending on the ball position, I can alter the height. And altering the height alters how much it runs out. So if I move it all the way forwards, I can throw it quite high. And it runs out a lot less. you really chuck it up there and get some stop on it. Or I can square up the blade and make it run. Well, the next shot I come across is when you are level with the same height of the green and you've got plenty of space. So I choose the running shot. So I have a pitching wedge and it's very much back foot and I stand very open just to get this left hip out of the way and then I play a running shot <laughs> and he thins it this is the problem when you talk so much you don't concentrate on what you're doing but that's my running shot with the pitching wedge nice if they go in but what we're looking for is to get down to that dustbin lid aren't we to get that easy tapping that isn't an easy tapping so these are my two shots sand wedge to go up and over back foot pitching wedge to run it out what I would recommend for the short game practice is that you use your gamer ball. No point coming on here with pinnacles if you play a Pro V1. Because what we're learning is not just distance, but how it bounces and how it grips on the second bounce and then slowly releases. And that's how we get our distance control by observing what we're doing 
and then repeating. Now we come to this one. This is the one that terrifies people. There's this great big yawning bunker in the way. But it's no different to the one round the side of the green there where we're chipping up. The only difference is, is this fills our mind with dread. But what tends to happen is you grip the club too tight, you pump up your forearms, your wrists don't work, you get that short stabby shot that basically does this. Oh well, that one got over. But you know what I mean. You get so afraid of this, so tense, that you drop it in there. So for this one, I'm going to move the ball forward, certainly forward of where I play my pitching wedge. But everything's got to be loosey-goosey. A very light grip. Make sure these wrists still work. And then it's a piece of cake, really. I can play a nice, relaxed shot. There's no difference. And the important thing that gets, uh, gets your mind off this thing is looking at your target. If you fill your mind with your target, it's gonna go to the target. If you fill your mind with whatever you're trying to avoid, well, that's where the ball's going. Here's a thought for you, something that I think about on a shot like this. If I think about getting nine or 10 feet past the flag, that's not a bad place to be, is it? If I offered you eight feet past this flag, you'd take it, wouldn't you? But if you're trying to play to get to the flag, then you've got to land only just over the bunker. So now if you catch it a little fat or a little thin, it's in the bunker. So if you think about going beyond the flag, then your bad shot will get to the flag, if you see what I mean. I really, once you're relaxed and these wrists are working and you haven't pumped up your forearm, you're not strangling the golf club. This becomes a very, very simple shot, I assure you. I mean, it's even more simple from the rough. You know, my, my nemesis is tight lie. But if I'm in the rough and the ball's kind of like sat fluffy, that's a piece of cake, really. So all you've got to do really is relax, think about the target, and think about going past the flag. And then shank it. <laughs> I've, been, I've been pitching this morning from about 30 yards. I hit four shanks out of 60 shots. So you can see that I've got some swing path issues at the moment. You can move this ball quite a long way forward as well. If you want to get it high, get some stop, open the face of your sand wedge, move the ball forward, lean into it, put your weight on your left side and damn well keep it there throughout the shot. And he hits the flag. So this really shouldn't be a frightening situation for you if you practice it and it's round here that we reduce our score this is the quickest way to reduce your score it doesn't matter if your handicap's 22 or 2 you go ask a 2 handicapper you go you find out a 2 handicapper in a club and you say what would you practice if you wanted to reduce your score they're going to say this from 100 yards in, or 60 yards in, or 30 yards in, or even 12 yards in. No matter what happens on a golf hole, 
you drive it in the rough, you thrash it somewhere near the green, possibly still in the rough. If you're going to make a par, it's with this club and the putter. If you drive it a little bit straighter and a little bit longer and you can't use a sand wedge and a putter, you've wasted it. Cheerio!